Right, so we're going to continue now um, from our last week lesson. Uh, I hope you have awakened enough to, to continue this. I know photosynthesis can be very overwhelming, but it's very interesting. Um, regardless of whatever um, disciplines that you want to take after you know, you have graduated from your first degree. More than not, you are going to have to deal with photosynthesis. Even if you are a breeder, you are a plant or crop economist, or I mean, like whatever it is, photosynthesis, because this is the beginning of everything. Okay? The reason you could um, eat. Uh, your your early breakfast today, you know, you eat rice, you're eating various agricultural produce, is because the plants are able to photosynthesize. They, they make their own food and we harvest this food. So this energize us and we can go on about with our life doing various things. Okay, just just um as a quick recap from last week's lessons, you have been introduced with the concept of photosynthesis that you know now it is not a simple process. Generally speaking, it comprises two reactions, hence the word photosynthesis. Photo is the first reaction and synthesis is the other. Photo reaction is the one that is um, involving the production of energy products, and this happens in the um, thylakoid membrane inside the chloroplast. Remember, this is your chloroplast. Your chloroplast is in your cell. Okay, there are many chloroplasts. Um, in cells, and most of them are actually pressed against the cell wall. Okay, so inside the chloroplast, you have two reactions of photosynthesis happening. The first reaction, the photo reaction, happening in here, in the stack of uh, granule here, and the thylakoid membranes. So this is where you can find your photosystem 1, photosystem 2, also the electron transport change. But the important thing from the first reaction of photosynthesis is you're going to get this product, namely the ATP. I hope you still remember the full name of it. And also an ADPH. The function of uh, these two molecules are that they are going to be used in the second a reaction of photosynthesis that is the synthesis to make the food molecules the sugar okay so atp and adph used by this kelvin cycle so this is your photo reaction okay and this is your synthesis reaction synthesis why synthesize this all this um, thing from this um, basic unit of sugar molecules. Okay, so at the Kevin cycle itself, remember it comprises three phases. Okay, you have your fixation, reduction, and also regeneration. Regeneration. Okay, so um, the fixation of what? Carbon from the carbon dioxide with the existing 5 carbon sugar, which is the RUBP. Remember, RUBP, ribulose bisphosphate. 5 carbon sugar joined in with the CO2 from the environment. Okay, well, it was gas originally from your atmosphere, when it gets into the plants, it is um, in, the, in the liquid form, it has been dissolved. You combine together and then you will get the 
um, G2P. Glycerol dehyde, three phosphate. Okay, but only one molecule of G3P exit here. The rest of it is regenerated. Okay, and all of this requires um, uh, some amount of ATP and NADPH, meaning that the more of these you have, both of these you have, the faster the cycle of a Kevin cycle is going to take place, therefore the more sugar you are going to end up with. However, remember one thing, um, the amount of ATP and NADPH is not being used at the same rate. ATP is used more than NADPH, okay? For, and for this reason, there is a special um, photophosphorylation that takes place. So this is uh, what we call as the cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Okay, so <clears throat> the, the non-cyclic photophosphorylation is what you learned last week, that is the Z scheme. Okay, the cyclic photophosphorylation um, in general, the the movement of the electrons kind of going um, in a cycle within the photosystem one and the electron transport change. So they kind of go in cycle. When they, when this happens, um, there's no uh, no NADPH um, uh, produced but you do get extra ATP process. So these extra ATPs are needed because the Kevin cycle uses more ATP than NADPH, right? Okay. Right, so we're going to continue with the types of photosynthesis now. So in, in general, even though um, the, the basis of photosynthesis is somewhat similar throughout the plant's kingdom, I mean, like any photosynthesizing organisms, for that matter, there are, there are types, okay? <clears throat> right? Because um, plants are very unique, okay? I think there are about 400,000 plant species on this planet, planet, okay? By species, we, we mean the actual species has not been um you know uh hybridized by the human intervention okay so the photosynthesis that you have learned so far we call it the c3 types why because if you go back to your kelvin cycle the first product is g3p this is the three carbon sugar two times of G3P will make a glucose. Okay, and then there's a second type, which is the C4 photosynthesis, and also the CAM photosynthesis. We'll have a look at these two. Okay, so one thing about Rubisco, remember, Rubisco, Rubisco is the most important enzyme in this um, uh, carbon fixation. So it's here, the joining of RUBP and CO2 is with the help of the enzyme Rubisco. Okay, please remember the full name of Rubisco, that's very important. Rubulose, bisphosphate, carboxylase, oxygenase, meaning that Rubisco can catalyze two biochemical reactions depending on the of the abundance of substrate surrounding it. If uh, carbon dioxide is more, is abundant surrounding Rubisco, then it will catalyze the carboxylation reaction. However, when oxygen starts to become more abundant, it will catalyze the oxygenation reaction and for the Kelvin cycle that you know the one that produces um, the sugar the 3gp 
utilize this carboxylation uh, reaction. Okay, if the Rubisco um, perform the oxygenation reaction, you will get photorespiration. Okay, carboxylation, you get your sugar. It's easy as that. <clears throat> So, um, we want the Rubisco to grab CO2 so that the fixation phase of the Kelvin cycle can happen. However, when you have your Rubisco here, oxygen and CO2 competes for the active site. Okay? Meaning that at one time, Rubisco, even with, with the abundance of CO2 surrounding it, there's always going to be some amount of oxygen. So therefore, the oxygenation process cannot be avoided. Okay. And, and we don't want this because photorespiration is not... Um, well, it, it does serve some purpose in plants, but in terms of our interest to get more sugar, to get more output, as simulates from photosynthesis, it is not of our concern. Okay, we don't want that to happen. Yeah. So, what's the deal with photorespiration? It happens when Rubisco reacts with oxygen. Okay, remember, this reacts with oxygen, meaning that the Rubisco has done the oxygenation reaction. Oxygenation reaction, not carboxylation. Carboxylation is the regular way to do C3 photosynthesis. Okay. When does this photorespiration happen? It happens when um, the intensity of light is high. And when this happens, you have lots of photolysis. Remember? Photolysis. How do you still remember this? If you go back to the uh, thing, somewhat um, at the beginning. Yeah, here. This is light, right? So when you have high intensity of light, you are going to cause this reaction center, this P680, to eject more of the um, electron. More electrons become excited now. So when the electron has been ejected out, this P80 become oxy dies okay when it's oxidized meaning that it's empty it's it's a hole and this hole needs to be fulfilled fulfilled with what electron of course and these electrons comes from water okay so water has been now forced to split into its component to fulfill the Hold the oxidized form of P680, and this process is called the photolysis. That's why, um, um, go back from here. That's why oxygen is now being very abundant. Okay, you have more photolysis now. Okay, right, and also the high heat. Okay, high heat. Um, I think this is very relevant in our tropical condition, right? And uh, because high heat, we are talking about heat uh, above uh, 30 degrees Celsius, okay? When heat um, is prevalent in the environment, this causes the stomata to close. Remember stomata, stomata, okay, so if, if that is your um, a baxial side of the leaf, okay, so this is your epidermal, so this is your stomata. So stomata facilitate gas exchange, okay, it allows oxygen to exit, it allows CO2 to get in, okay. So when it closed, 
so the mouths are closed. Not only that CO2 is not able to enter into the leaf, so this is your mesophyll cell and, and, and everything, but oxygen is also not able to um, exit um, through it. When this happens, the buildup of oxygen is not being uh, avoided. Okay, so you have now less CO2 and more oxygen. Okay, when this happens, we go back to the rubisco now. The oxygenation reaction of rubisco will happen and photorespiration will take place. Okay, it is estimated that um, when this photorespiration happens, the photosynthetic efficiency uh, is reduced by 25% or even more, okay, depending on the plant species, right? Okay. So why, why does the matter close? Simply because to conserve water, okay? Uh, I need to... Okay. Besides um, uh, oxygen that can exit through the stomata, any gas actually can exit the stomata. Another gas is actually water vapor, H2O. Okay, it's pretty much like you're sweating. Okay, this is this is how you get your transpiration. Okay. So, your plants transpire, okay, in order to cool the leaf, but in the process, you lose a significant amount of water vapor. And when this keep on continue, if the plants don't close stomata, it's going to uh, uh, experience wilting very soon. Okay. <clears throat> um, so, photorespiration, even though um, it is uh, happening all the time to most of the plants, there are some plants which through evolution has created this special type of photosynthesis, okay? So, right? So it's called the C4 pathway and also uh, the CAM pathway, okay? Because both uh, CO2 are converted into four carbon intermediate first. That's why the name is C4 for the regular um, Kelvin cycle. The first product is G3P. This is three carbon sugar. That's why most of the photosynthesis on the land plant call it C3 photosynthesis. But some special plant species, the first product of carbon fixation, we're talking about carbon fixation now, okay? Carbon fixation. Okay, the first product. Okay, it's not um, three carbon, but rather the four carbon, hence the name C4 photosynthesis. Okay, the CAM pathway also use this kind of uh, carbon fixation method as well. Okay, and that has something to do with the leaf anatomy. Okay, so in C3 plants, most of the plants that you have studied so far, um, the photosynthesis happen in the mesophyll cells okay pretty much everything all the, the process okay so you have your mesophyll cells and the small um, dots here these are the chloroplast and then this is your stomata and there's um, two types of uh, mesophyll remember um, this is your spongy mesophyll at the bottom here the stomata and then you have the um, palisade We call it palisade because it looks like a column, column or pillar. Okay. And most of the um, photosynthesizing activity are actually being carried out by this palisade uh, mesophyll, okay, and it's closer to the upper epidermis because the sun coming this way, okay, and this upper epidermis transparent. Some amount of sun can get through and pass the, the top layer 
and then hit um, the lower part of the tissue that has this uh, spongy mesophy cell. But since much of the light has been utilized by the upper part, that's why um, the, the lower uh, mesophyll, which is the spongy mesophyll, have fewer number of chloroplasts compared to the palisade mesophyll. Okay. So you have you have this uh, regular anatomy of the C3 plant. Okay. So this is the vascular bundle. Okay. By vascular, the vein. So the vein is the vascular bundle. It contains phloem and xylem. You remember phloem um, conducts um, products of photosynthesis to the rest of the plant, while xylem is the conduit for, for the water. Okay. Yeah. Now, in between the vascular bundle or the veins, you've got your vein here, one vein here, and one vein here. You have a number of um, mesophyll cells. Well, like in this case, you have one, two, three, sometimes even more. Okay, and the distance of um, cells between these two veins can be seven, can be eight, can be ten, can be four. Right. So when you see that the number of um, cells here is actually more than one, this is the regular C3 leaf anatomy. Okay. However, <clears throat> when the plants utilize the this other type of photosynthesis, it has this special leaf anatomy. It's called the Kranz anatomy. Okay. So look at look at the, the two ectomania. So rice is the C3 plant. Maize or the corn is the C4 plant. And this is your uh, uh, bundle, uh, your vascular bundle. And this is your bundle sheath cell. And this is the mesophyll cell. And it's also the same here, okay? So you put the sheath here. So you got your mesophyll cells here. Okay. The number of mesophyll cells in between the two bundle sheath or two veins, it's a very narrow spacing. Okay. You only got what, like two 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 numbers of, of cells here. But for the C3 plants, the number of mesophyll is a lot, okay. Here, one, two, three, four, and the number of that two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven cells in between two um, vascular bundles, two veins. However, in here, you only got two, so this is very narrow. So, when you have this kind of uh, ar cells arrangement, this is what we call as the special crowns and not. And this is just the regular C3 anatomy. Okay. So what's up with the C4 uh, pathway? So in the C4 plants, the photosynthesis occurs in both the mesophyll cells and also the bundle sheath cells. Okay. So where are those actually? So bundle sheath cell is the cells immediately next to the Vein or the vascular bundle. So this is your vascular bundle. The cells right next to it is the bundle shift cell. So this is your bundle shift cell. Okay. Outside of that, the rest of the cells surrounding it, those are the mesophyll cell. Okay. Mesophyll cells here. Okay. So the, the way it happens is <clears throat> the first step of carbon fixation is actually happening in the different cells than the rest of the 
Kelvin cycle. So let's look at this uh, pathway here. Number one, in the midst of the cell, the enzyme PEP carboxylase, PEP, it stands for phosphoenol pyruvate, adds carbon dioxide to PEP. Okay, so you have your um, CO2 here. Okay, and then it joins with the PEP, phosphoenol pyruvate you know, pyruvate with the help of PEP carboxylase. Okay, so this is not Rubisco, okay? This is not Rubisco. Okay. The joining of this creates um, the first uh, four carbon product. It's called the oxaloacetate, okay? Which will be converted to malate, which is still four carbon product. And then immediately, it will be transported into the neighboring adjacent cell, which is the bundle shift cells. Okay, you see the tunnel here. Tunnel here. This is a special tunnel, and we call it um, plasmo plasmata. Oops, plasmata. Okay, tunnels um, connecting uh, to adjacent cells. Okay. So this all common product, the mallet, enters the um, uh, the bundle shift cells via plasma plasmata. Okay, in the bundle shift cells, CO two is released and enters the Kelvin cycle. So CO two now, when it has been released, it will join with with the regular Kelvin cycle. Okay, so this is your regular synthesis part of photosynthesis okay and then you got your sugar which is your um, assimilates of your photosynthesis and since the vein the piping system of the plant right next to it it just exits okay so this system it looks very efficient okay everything right next to each other compared to the mist of your cells Okay, look at the mesophyll cell uh, for the C3 plant. Once it has um, photosynthesized, the sugar actually needs to be transported to the other photosynthesis, photosynthesizing cells before it can reach the vascular bundle. So it takes time for the sugar to um, exit the cells. Okay, but for the cross anatomy, the sugar can pretty much exit the cell very quickly because the bundle shift in which the Kelvin cycle happens is right next to the vascular bundle, right? Okay, so this is the um, the enlarged version of this guy here. So remember what happens, CO2 is fixed into 4-carbon intermediate. So this is your CO2 with the help of PEP carboxylase. Okay, It traps the CO2 instead of Rubisco. Okay? Remember, Rubisco is not in action now. Okay. And then the first product is the 4-carbon product. Okay. That's why it's called the C4 pathway. And then this will be transported into the bundle shift cells through plasma desmata. Okay. CO2 is then released from the four carbon malate. Okay. When the malate is in the bundle shift cell, the CO2 is then released, and when it's released, it will join with the regular Kelvin cycle. Okay. Normal C3 uh, cycle. Right. Okay. That's all that happened. Okay. And then this whole thing, it's called as CCM. In some literature, in some book, it will use this word CCM. It stands for carbon concentrating mechanism. Why? Why? Why the name is this way? So when this happened, you see. The Rubisco here, 
it has no, almost no access to oxygen. Okay, no reason. Okay, because all the carbon has been concentrated first and then released all at once in the bundle shift cell. Okay, remember it involves two cells. Right, so this prevents. to respiration right <clears throat> okay. so how this all um, limits photo respiration one thing is bandage itself are far from the surface it's less ox access to the oxygen okay remember this bandage itself less access to the oxygen. But carboxylate doesn't have an affinity for oxygen. It's not like Rubisco. Who is pep carboxylase? This. This carbon fixation enzyme. It's not like Rubisco. It only have love for carbon dioxide only. Oxygen? No. It is not like Rubisco. Okay. So this is the work of evolution. Uh, that's why this thing come about. Okay, this is not present in all plant species, only in some plant species. Okay, the best example that we study is in the maize plant, the corn plants. Okay, so when carb plant pep carboxylase, which doesn't have affinity for oxygen, it allows the CO2 to be collected and concentrated in the bundle shift cells where Rubisco is. Okay. Regularly, if you allow some Rubisco to do the job on its own, it will start to fix both the oxygen and also the carbon dioxide. So that's not very um, efficient. Okay, so PEP carboxylase come to the rescue because it uh, grabs the CO2, concentrate it, and then release all at once surrounding the. Uh, Rubisco, which is present in the bundle cells. Okay, so and then the the third types of the uh, photosynthesis is the CAM pathway. CAM pathway actually use this um, um, regular C four as well, but um, it's uh, it's rather happening at night. The fixation of CO two happening at night. Oh, CO two at night time. Okay. CAM, it stands for Crassulation Acid Metabolism because this was first found in the family of Crassulaceae, the plant. Okay. Right. So, what happened is um, CO2 at night stores the four carbon molecules. So, this is what happens. CO2 incorporated in the four carbon organic acids at night. This happens at night because the CAM um, plants, they open stomata at night. Okay, During the day, they close night. During the day, they close stomata. So when they open stomata at night, they allow a rush of CO2 to get in and when this happened the incorporation of CO2 into four carbon um, organic acids can happen okay and then during the day organic acid release the CO2 to the Kelvin cycle okay and then it can proceed with the regular C3 uh, pathway so this is being separated temporarily Temporarily, it means by time. Okay. On the other hand, the C4 pathway, it's separated, separated spatially by space by using two types of cells: the mesophyll cells and bundle shear cells. So it's it happens in both diff different locations. 
the fixation happens in different locations. Okay, the camp pathway it is being separated temporarily. Okay, this is still the same cells. Okay, but because the fixation happens at night, the rest of the Kelvin cycle, the reduction and regeneration happens during the day. Okay, and then it follows like a, like the regular Kelvin uh, <coughs> cycle pathway, right? So when the the good thing is in this is plant can still still do the Kelvin cycle during the day without losing the water. Okay. Why it doesn't lose the water? Because stomata are closed. Right. So the good example for the camp plants, like what? Yeah. Pineapple. Okay. Pineapple. Uh, another example for the C4 plants is the sugar cane. Okay. Okay. So this is the summary of the C4 photosynthesis. Okay. In C4 photosynthesis, there's a two types. The first type separates by space. Okay. Spatially. Okay. The second type, which is the CAM pathway, separates by time. This is all temporarily, temporarily. Okay. Regardless of whether it's been div divided specially or temporarily, the first product of this pathway is always the four carbon compound, okay, which is the oxaloacetate and also the malate. Right. <clears throat> okay. So um we're not going to have a very close look at the photorespiration because that is that needs to be learned uh, on its own. But what I can highlight to you now is um the, the major differences between the photosynthesis and also the um uh, respiration and photorespiration. Okay, when <clears throat> when we call respiration actually respiration and put it this way. There's a two type of respiration, okay. There's a cellular respiration. Cellular respiration. And also the photorespiration. <coughs> okay. So cellular respiration is the one that involves the mitochondria. Breakdowns um, glucose. Breakdown glucose happens in mitochondria. Photorespiration is um, the pathway to salvage carbon. Okay, it happens in three organelles. Okay, it happens in chloroplast. It happens in um, peroxisomes, it happens in mitochondria. Okay, right. <clears throat> so, um, the list that you um, look at here is actually the combination of these two. Okay. So in general, photosynthesis, you have your uh, photophosphorylation, you've got your NADPH form, uh, CO2 is being reduced, CO2 is also the substrate, the H2O is a substrate, oxygen is the product, um, CH2O is also the product, okay? But for the respiration, um, it utilizes the oxidative uh, phosphorylation, uh, don't worry about this. I just want to highlight it. We will learn about this um, in other lesson. Okay, you got your NADP form, just like the photosynthesis. Okay, there's an oxygen reduction. Okay, CO two is the product. H two O is also the product. Um, oxygen is the substrate. Okay, it's a difference here. Yeah? Okay, oxygen is being used here, but for the photosynthesis, oxygen is um product. 
okay and CH2O uh, is a substrate and also um, product okay right what is this um, CH2O this is the precursor of your sugar precursor of the let's say carbohydrate is more that's more accurate carbohydrate okay if it's three carbon that's your g3p glycerol dehyde three phosphate if it's six carbon that is your um, glucose but the, the formula the chemical formula is this that's why it's named in such a way all right <clears throat> i think that's all um, that um, we need to learn about the photosynthesis for now okay right okay um is there is there any question up to this point <clears throat> Uh, doctor. Yeah. Uh, for C for photosynthesis, mm -hmm. uh, the cycle occurs in uh, <coughs> vascular by the uh, shift cell, right? Yeah. So the at this so the chaos, so the cable cycle uh, yeah, at, at at the bundle shift at the bundle shift cell mm -hmm. the cable cycle Occurs in stroma, right? Okay. Um, uh, uh, say again. Can we say it happens in what? Uh, <clears throat> for C4 photosynthesis. Yeah, which is this uh, one. There are two different, uh, two, two different cell, which is mesophyte cell and the uh, shift cell. Yes. So, uh, the band, so the band shift cell has, uh, has chloroplast two. Because yeah. the cabin cycle. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. So um um actually chloroplast uh can be present in a number of cells. Okay. It can also present in um the gut cells of stomata. Okay. So this um can give the output products that is needed, which is the ATP and also the NADPH. Okay. <clears throat> the whole idea is to prevent Rubisco from meeting oxygen. All right? So you have you have your your um uh, chloroplast as usual for the products of ATP and NADPH. And then the Kelvin cycle um, will utilize these two energy high compounds to do the regular cycle. You know, the fixation, the reduction, and also regeneration. Yeah. Thank you, Okay. Okay, um, um, while we are at this, I just want to uh, get you uh, uh, prepared for, well, not tomorrow, um, on the uh, Wednesday, because um, we are going to learn about your um, leaf area measurements uh, from last week, okay? So, um, I want you to download this one software um, into your computer. Uh, let me open that. So if you go to the Google, you can search for image J. Right? You have this. And then you go to download. It's very easy. Okay, you go to image J. I strongly suggest that you do this ahead of time, okay? Because um, sometimes the um, internet uh, in the faculty is not that great. So you might have trouble. So, okay, so this is the download page for the image. Eh? Um, choose your um, operating system and then download it. So for mine, it's this um, 
uh, image to 64 bit for, for Windows. So download and install it. It's very straightforward. So that's um that's all good. Let me see. Yeah, has that been downloaded? Oh it is downloading. Okay. <clears throat> okay, what else is the time now? I think we got time. I think we got time. Maybe I can um um demo to you today how how to do the leaf uh, area measurements so that because um uh, I'm not sure what whether they are going I mean like the, the lab people whether they are going to do the seed germination test tomorrow or not the TZ test tomorrow if they actually do the TZ test tomorrow um we don't have lots of time to you know to address this so i think let's address it today if if um it happens that on the wednesday less work is actually done we can revisit this if you have any question you can ask me there right uh let's see has this been downloaded uh, oh it's downloaded but it's kind of slow why my internet is slow not to worry um i'll give you i'll give you a few a minutes uh a 10 minutes to download this and install to your computer okay and then open it so let's give you until 9 55 to download and open it okay. yeah i already got this into my computer so that's not really a problem so open it uh, access so it should open to this small window of this up there okay so please do this and because i want to show you uh, how to measure uh, the leaf area using the third way which is using the scale remember from from your app last week okay we have the image i want the image from last week okay this image let's download this image do this okay um uh, i'll wait for you for a bit if you got any problem you can uh, ask me now Okay, I'll give you until 9.55 to, to download this uh, so that we can do the activity to measure the leaf area, okay? Okay, okay. if you've got any, any question, you can ask me in the meantime.
Huh. Um, how are you doing? Did you manage to um, install ImageJ? Uh, yes, I already installed. Okay. Um, anybody got problems? I hope um, you can do this, okay? All right. So um, let's quickly learn how to do this. And let's see. Um, so when you open your image, um, so you need to first open the image from your activity. You don't have to use my image, okay? This is just the image that I got uh, from our exercise last week. Um, open this. You can use your own image. <clears throat> Number one, you need to tell image J now the amount of uh, actual measurements in centimeter because your ruler is centimeter is equivalent to how many pixels okay because our cameras are different okay so, uh, due to the lens due to the software program and so on so we tell the image a in reality one centimeter is actually equivalent to how many pixels okay in order to do that you can um, press control you hover um, the cursor over your ruler and then press control and using your mouse scroll up scroll up scroll up while holding the control okay okay so more or less um this is not a great image uh because i i, I was uh, kind of just playing around with with it that time right so i hope you have a better image but at least you can see um the the numbers on the ruler here yeah, okay so then using these line tools here yeah, you create a straight line from the clearest number that you can see as in here i can see from 10 to 11 right so that is actually equivalent to one centimeter so i drag from here straight line okay straight line all the way to 11. okay that is one centimeter <clears throat> do not remove that so immediately go to the analyze and then go to set scale okay so okay so this is the information that we need so the distance here in pixels is actually equivalent to 25.5 pixels the known distance this is the one that you need to change we know that this is one centimeter so we press one centimeter the unit here, we change it to cm because that is the unit of your ruler. And you can make it global if the rest of your images are the same, but uh, I don't think it's going to be the same because you know you are using different distance, right? Every time you take uh, your pictures. So click OK. All right. So when that happens, um, image now knows the pixels distance to actually what? reality measurement so if we uh, take the straight line again using this leaf use the hand to move it for example i want to know the um, the width of this leaf i just use the straight line go across it okay to get the measurements you need to press m m equals to measurements okay press m so this is the length. The length is actually 1.96 um, centimeter. All right. Okay. If you don't see this, um, the parameters to be taken by your measurements, you can change it. Okay. Go to the results and then set measurements here. Okay. You can you can click whatever results that what you want to appear on this. Um, um, results uh, column okay uh, for me i have clicked the area and also the limit threshold okay that's because that's for the other activity click okay so um the way that i want you to use now is um you can measure this using this freehand selection okay so basically you are tracing this area of the leaf using this freehand selection and then you click the measurements okay i know it's 
it's not easy to use um, the mouse, but you can work leaflet by leaflet. Once you are done with one leaflet, then you press M and then you can continue uh, with the other leaflet. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just going to use my pen. You can enlarge the image, okay, if you if you need to do so. So I'll just use my pen. Oh, oh it's not that great. It's not that great. Okay, this requires a lot of patience, okay. Um, I'm not going to do leaflet by leaflet because my hands kind of help my hand not feel tired easily. So yeah, so yeah, you so you just basically trace it, trace it, trace it. Okay, I'm not going to do this perfect because this is just a demonstration. Oops. That's very ugly and inaccurate, but you get the idea. Right, so let's say that that's the, the trace, the tracing of the leaf. So I just press M. When I press M, um, okay, why, why is it not um, appearing? Okay, so um, yeah, it's at the back actually. So this is the area. So my area of my whole thing that I have traced here is actually 87.29 centimeters square. You can actually copy this uh, and then you can send it straight to the Excel if you want to, okay? Uh, it's, it's very easy. <clears throat> it's very easy. Let me open that. Oh, by the way, if you want to, to have another Okay. You can paste it, so it will follow. But you need to tell um, each column to what because it doesn't um, copy the full, uh, column description. If you want to know the parameter, you can do that as well. You can just set it, set the measurements, go to parameter. Okay. Right. So, um, well, this one. Uh, I think it only works for the new measurements, not the pre previous measurements that you, you, you have done. So, for example, if I want to know um, <clears throat> this one leaflet, the area of it, oh, that's, that's, not, that's not pretty, that's not pretty, that's not pretty. Let's try, start that again. Yeah, suppose that is the, the leaf that I try to trace on. So when I press M, so that is the area of this leaflet, 19.9 centimeters square. And then the perimeter, the surrounding lining of this leaflet outline, that is 21.96 centimeter. It will give you straight the answer because you have set your scale measurements. All right. So that is one way to do it. The other way to do it is <clears throat> you use the threshold technique. Okay, I'm not sure if this is going to work very well or not. Uh, let's try this. Because <clears throat> I think I, I've, I've found a better way to do it. But um, I'm, I'm not certain at the moment. Because uh, I've only done it a couple of times. But not to worry. Let's do it the uh, or old way. So um, the scale is still the same. Uh, image J knows that. We need to change this image into um, the 8 bit. So change it to 8 bit. Now it has become blue, not blue, um, black and white. Right. Okay. Now we need to remove um, this unwanted stuff surrounding the leaf because we are only interested with the leaf. So with this threshold technique, Minimize the um, irrelevant items as much as possible. Just your subject, okay? So to do that, you can use, uh, maybe I'll just use this um, rectangular selection. So we just select um, our region of interest using this rectangular selection. Yep. So that is the region that we're interested. So we can 
topic, you can go to the um, right. If I click crop, let's see what happens. Oh yeah. Okay. So when you click crop, it has now eliminated the ruler. Not don't worry about the ruler. You have told the image eh, what is the measurements like. So that it has been kept. So this is the image. So you need to highlight the your leaf now. So to do that, you go to the you need to click this, okay? Click the, the image window, then you click the image, you go to adjust, and then you go to threshold. Okay. So um I just use default because I think it works best. It's pretty much like this. A good image will, will give you a perfect outline shading like this. Okay. Crappy image will give you crappy outline. Okay. You can see that it kind of highlights unwanted stuff um, you know, in between the leaflet. It's because of the um the pencil shadings, because that's why it is very advisable to put the leaf on the clear paper okay, rather than put on just any paper like what I do not. So um, you can use any uh, way here to highlight the leaf. I just stick with the default. And then you can play here with the threshold here to highlight more or to highlight less. So you can move the slider. The more you leave to the left or, or to the right, the less it shades. But the more you to the left oh why it becomes like that now okay okay let's reset that let's reset that what did what did i do wrong i think yeah i want it that way yeah yes that's two sliders okay so slide yep so it highlights um, uh, just your compound leaves here, and then you uh, press apply. See, now um, the things uh, that have been highlighted are just your leaflets, okay? So when you're done with that, you go to, um, actually, I think you can uh, press M straight away. Let's see what happens. So you press M straight away, and actually you get the area already, eighty three point nine. Is that far away from um by hand selection, free hand selection? Yeah, quite a bit. So um, so now you can decide which one is more accurate. I think for me, uh, I would rather to follow this uh, method because um, remember where while I was tracing using the free hand selection, I kind of didn't get it right, the tracing of each um, uh, leaflet because my, my hand is not very stable. Okay, so you use uh, the threshold method to get this area 83.90910. So you can compare, try to compare this using your um, what, what method do you have? You have the graph paper method and also the automatic leaf area method. Let's compare uh, which one is is uh, because each method has its own merits okay and at times you can use all of them but at times you cannot use all of them maybe just one is only um, uh, accessible to you all right okay so um, do that and let's see how how you're getting on right all right okay um, any question I hope you have tried <laughs> is everybody okay? Okay, doctor. Okay. Right. Um, have you tried? Does it look okay? Right. Not to worry, you can play around with this. Um uh when you see me on Wednesday, you can ask me later if it uh doesn't work or maybe you got some issues with, with the software, okay? All right, uh, what's the time now? <clears throat> okay, um, I'm going to leave um, um, for your questions that you need to ask until 9.15. If there is any anything else, I think we can dismiss the class afterwards, okay?
Uh, all right. Um, if you haven't got any question, further questions, I think that's all for today. So um, I'll see you on Wednesday. And you, uh, if you can, please bring your laptop so that we can learn um, things further uh, with the image J as well as with your um, Excel because we need to learn how to make the correlation graph, right? Okay, uh, I'll see you uh, on Wednesday and thank you for joining in. Bye. Thank you, Doctor. Bye. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor.